All right, guys, Good Boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting in here at the review table. And today I wanted to kind of, well, I'm kind of jumping the gun here because I've got two hand guards and I wanted to do a review on each one of them individually. And we will. Uh, one hand guard is from JP. The other one is from Geisley. Now let's talk about these. This right here, this is the new hand guard offered by JP. This is their new M lock series. This is the 15 and a half inch. These things just came out and I'm really looking forward to putting this guy on the competition rifle. And the reason I kind of have to do this review now is that this is going to go on the rifle this weekend because I'm going to defoul that barrel and clean it up real good. And I want to go ahead and tear the rifle down and we're going to put this handguard on it. Now, the cool part about this is if you follow my channel, you know that I like those handguards and I put the, uh, skateboard tape on it and then I well out with a Dremel tool all the little holes in here and this reminded me of it because it's been rock blasted check that out and that cool so I'm comparing it to this guy right here this is a Geisley mark 8 handguard this is 15 inches in length and this is going on another one of my high speed low drag builds what I thought would be kind of fun is that we have two handguards and let me preface this guys I know that and I'm I do it all the time. I take a fifty dollar handguard. It does exactly what I want it to do. Uh, I've actually had more success with the fifty dollar handguards than I have with the, oh I don't know, say the the hundred dollar handguards. And one of the things I'm going to do here in the near future is I'm going to show you some of the things that I have run into with some of the handguards in the past. It really, really irritate me. Now, let's just talk about that real quickly. One of the most important things to me is that the top of the receiver, back here. Okay, where it connects, stays in perfect alignment all the way down. And one of the things that I've often found is when you have a handguard that tightens up right here, sometimes that handguard tends to, when you tighten it, it will rise up, which look, makes it look like the barrel is sh sh coming down. It's not. The handguard's coming up. If you lay it on a flat plate, what happens is you'll see there's a sixteenth or one eighth of an inch. <laughs> piece of space between here and that flat plate. I just wanted to preface that, that, hey, you know, there's nothing wrong with a $50 handguard. On occasion, though, when you have a high-end rifle, you want to keep doing the high-end stuff. All right, so let's talk about this guy right here. This is the Geisley Mark 8. This is their 15-incher. And like I said, the reason I got this is because I've had it in my mind that I've, I always, I don't know about you guys, but I wake up in the middle of the night singing that song about wanting to build an AR. <laughs> Watch a liberal's head explode. But in any case, uh, every time I turn around, I start thinking and I'm putting spreadsheets together and I'm starting to put different ideas and I've never had a Geisley handguard. And I found this one. This was on Big Daddy Unlimited. It was actually in stock and then it went out of stock and then it came into stock and I, I ordered it. All right. And by the way, yeah, I paid for both of these. Okay, so these weren't gimmies, and I'm not shilling for anybody like some jackass said earlier. Okay, so uh, what's the difference? Well, one is more of like a quad rail. Now, I'm a big fan of quad rails. Matter of fact, let me let me go back and talk about the high-speed low drag builds. There are several handguards that are in the $150 range. I like the BCM handguard, M-Lock. It's bad to the bone. And we'll probably do a uh, another comparison down the road comparing all three of these. But in any case, uh, this thing is equipped with kind of a quad rail scenario. You've got an outer rail, outer rail, outer rail, outer rail. It's continuous pick rails. It's got lightning cuts in the top of it, and it is numbered. All right, so the cool thing about M-Lock, well, you've got attachments. And, and guys, this is right, this right here. Let me show you. This is a uh, quick attachment a device by a company called Kinetic Development Group. Bought this off of Amazon. I paid $53 for this. May seem excessive, but let me tell you something. At the end of the day, when you need a pick reel, watch this. Boom, you're done. Okay? And what I normally will do is, I'm a big fan of Atlas, is I'll take my Atlas bipod and I'll put that on there. And then all I got to do on my pick reel, I can actually leave this in my range bag. And there you go. I've got a bipod. I don't have to worry about trying to find or putting multiple pick rails on there. Now, the JP is pretty cool because it has uh, M-Lock all the way down on all sides right here. Well, let me show you something really cool. It's notched out 
right here. And we'll talk about this more when we do the actual review. It's nice out here, here, and here. And that's pretty cool because they do this for adjustable gas blocks. Getting your uh, little Allen wrench. If you got a side adjustment gas block, you can get in there just like that. Um, purpose. Purpose of use. I'm putting this on my competition rifle. This is going to go on a high-end uh high speed low drag rifle duty rifle duty style rifle i love this thing uh one being because and we'll talk about this later on you've got a, a damn barrel nut in here that is roughly about two and a half inches in length and what does that mean to you uh, it is going to have the rigidity that you need to keep it straight and keep that flex down. So one, if you put, say for instance, you've got your laser that's co-witness with one of your optics, you're not gonna get any flex. So that laser is going to be, the probability that it will be on is going to be higher than if you had something that had more flex. Now, the cool thing about the JP rifle system is it has a very unique bolt our barrel nut locking system similar to the mark three you know guys if you follow my channel you know i'm a big fan of those mark three because the knurling on there but with this rock blasting rock blasting it really watch this i'm gonna put it up to the microphone you can hear it and you can also say hell if you need something to file your nails down look at that you can do that but also you've got the m lock and i will tell you this i have placed this thing on here before and these M lock openings are very very tight and you're probably going to need something uh, maybe need a little assistance but I will tell you this I'd rather it be tight look that thing don't move it at all wow that's nice let's do this let me peel that thing off of here and look at it uh -oh. drop the washer and getting a little bit of little bit of movement here on the uh, Geisley. Is that a bad thing? No, not really. But I do like the fact that that thing is tight as a button on this guy. Hopefully I can get it back on there. You just got to slap it on there real good. There it is. No movement. All right, that's a good thing. So really quickly, it's interesting. So you think about these deals. Look at the diameter, the circumference of them, Okay. Uh, the interior dimensions, the inner diameter of this guy right here is 1.35. That's right, the Geisley. Look at the outside. 1.35. The interior dimensions of this guy right here is 1.4. Is uh, one-tenth of an inch going to kill you? Probably not. Um, but the outside diameter of the Geisley is 2.11 inches. And the outside diameter of this guy right here is 1.66 now here's the thing you've got about a half inch longer on the JP than the Geisley but the Geisley is one ounce even with the barrel nut one out one full ounce lighter than the JP okay uh, I do like the deal that the Geisley comes with its own uh, gas block not sure if I'm gonna use the gas block or not might save it for something else but that's it um, on occasion, you want to treat yourself to something really cool. And I've been saving up a long time for both of these guys. And I'm very excited about putting this on the on the uh, competition rifle. We're actually going to take it back out, retest it. If you guys watched that video where I shot those hand loads through there, uh, man, they were all over the place. But I think if we after we take the carbon out of that barrel, we're going to tighten her up a little bit. And then I'm very excited about showing you guys the upcoming series with uh, this particular uh, build. And I'm going to not tell you what all of that thing's going to entail, but it's going to be probably one of the coolest duty style rifles I've ever done. Without a fact, without a doubt. And it, actually that law tactical folder was supposed to go on this build because what I wanted was something that was full onslaught duty, super duty and was portable. All right. That's it, guys. Uh, if you got any questions, please don't hesitate in asking down below. They both retail for roughly about the same thing, anywhere from $250 to $275. Uh, and that's expensive for a rail. But when you're talking about a good high-end build, save your money. Buy a rail this month. A couple months later, buy the barrel 
by the way, we're putting the Seekins in this guy. With that being said, uh, guys, if you like these type of videos, please don't hesitate in giving it a thumbs up. Uh, I'll be looking forward to your comments down below. We always end them like this. God bless America. God bless us men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom is never free. And I'm talking about those guys and girls who defend our Constitution. Not them big old tub of lards that roll down the street with their damn full kit and M4s on a couple people who are demonstrating. Or some jackass who wants to put a hairdresser in jail. What is the world coming to? Let's go to Boy32. I'm out.